this. Okay. The whole thing is is completely different from what it started out as being. Yeah, well, that's true. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, again, I think. You can change the word there the, too, the abusive. The reason why it's personal is because it's it's individual behavior. Oh, for which one? Well, I'll take this one right here. Yeah. Clearly, I mean, abusive is. But personal behavior why else is. Would you? is well, abusive case. I, okay, so I don't want to get in. I don't want to spend the rest of this GA talking about the semantics of the one word. Um, so I, I think what I'm going to do is um, read the statement. I'm going to read a statement and see if we come to consensus on it. We can amend it later if we need to. Um, I'm going to read the statement again, and then we're going to um, see if we can come to consensus on the statement as it is with the understanding that is open to amendment and that we can amend it next week at the GA if we want to or we can amend it next year. It is that nothing here is written in stone. Um, so the proposal as it stands right now is Occupy New Hampshire is an inclusive group. No one will be excluded on the except for on the basis except on the basis of their own personal behavior and the consents and through the consensus process. Those words, is there anyone here that blocks based on this terminology for the statement of solidarity? Or is, okay. So if you support this, yeah, this is, I'm not gonna add abusive here. We can amend it later. Did I say The statement of inclusiveness? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You said the word own. Own? Oh, own, yeah. Okay. So, if you can support this statement as it's written, could you raise one hand? Okay, can you put your hands down? If you don't support this statement as written, can you raise one hand? Okay, that looks like consensus to me. Does that look like <laughs> consensus to you? Yeah, that looks yes. like consensus. Yes. All right, so that's done. And again, this is something that we can amend at any point in time. And this will okay. appear on the website and yeah we'll places. post this this after within the next 24 hours <laughs> um okay what is next all right the second one is very simple and i i think it probably won't have a lot of amending uh it says onh is committed to the consensus process for determining our direction and policies so we'll go around if you have anything to add or you can say it um i'll start i have nothing to say I support it. I ask for a consensus. <laughs> is that okay if we go around? The, I mean, that's what we. That's. I can have consensus about consensus. We have, I would have one thing. Is like specifically pointing out that seventy-five percent is not that supermajority is not consensus because that's what I saw that the other group had said that we're going to decide stuff by seventy-five percent. I'd say specifically saying no to that okay, so we might add to it. Like, and that might be part of how we just. Like, that's important. Consensus is defined by everyone. Right. That's okay, unanimity. so. No, um, I have a timely suggestion. Yeah. That we all swing further into the shade here or, or <laughs> bake out there in the sun. Okay. Um, I'm, so. I, I'm fine, right? Can I get a temperature check? Is everybody good to go around the circle to talk really quickly about I, the consensus I, process? I, I, I'd like to see if. It, because we're talking about the consensus process and I think we've already demonstrated our commitment to it. If there's anybody that has an issue with the process as we've been using it and with making a statement that says this is the kind of process we want to be using. Otherwise, you know, I think just twinkle fingers and let's just hit the piece so that way we can move okay. forward a little bit because we did get bogged down in the first place. Okay, so yeah. is there anyone who opposes this statement of um the consensus process being the model that we're, could you, we're utilizing. Could you just repeat? ONH is committed to the consensus process for determining our direction and policies. Does anybody object to that statement or have suggestions for rewording? Does anyone block that statement? Okay, so given, um, if you can raise one hand if you support the statement that Occupy New Hampshire relies on consensus. Is there, okay, you put your hands down. Is there anyone opposed to the statement? <laughs> that looks like consensus to me. Does that look like consensus to you? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Back. Consensus right. at consensus. <laughs> Woo! It's inception. <laughs> okay, last one, and then we have an action item. Woo! -hoo! Yes, doing uh, things. The third one says, ONH does not support any political candidates. That's easy. That's, I mean. <laughs> 
Okay, so does anyone have any statement opposing this or to, to amend this? Okay, is there anyone that blocks this statement? Why do you want to get nobody? Uh, what about Vermin Supreme? <laughs> How about you nobody? As an individual, you as an individual can certainly support his candidacy. Um, the, um, so if well, you can... I, I, have, I have a direct response, which is Vermin Supreme, when he heard about this split, was very upset. And so that was his input, was he was not happy that the Free Staters and the Occupiers we're having this because he considers them both to be his constituencies. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure he does. So if so, I can't use that right now. Um, so if you could raise one hand if you support this, um, not supporting political candidates or endorsing. Okay. If you could put one hand down, if you don't support this statement, can you raise one hand? Okay. So we do you block though? I'm not blocking. I just Okay, does that look like consensus to everybody? I, I'm just curious if you're going to, is there a particular thing you object to or you think we should? Um, I think we, um, yeah, actually I think it's in our best interest to actually support and get behind a political candidate, if, especially if they're going to be making laws for us. I think it's too divisive. Too divisive. Yeah, yeah. It's too divisive. Yeah, it's something I might want. Yeah. Yeah. It's already been exactly, divisive. exactly. That's the, it's true that we all might have different ideas, but again like these people are actually going to be elected into office to speak for us <laughs> so i think it's actually kind of crazy for us not to support somebody but it's not there's a difference between you supporting somebody as an individual and us and yeah. occupy as a group it's exactly like we're stronger as a group i have an amendment i think this might solve think, well, how about um occupy new hampshire no, does not currently support a political well, any political candidate and we won't until um consensus is there's I think right now for not doing it, so I'm So even if we said this today, yeah. and in six months, if we had a group of people who were part of Occupy, that okay. we had sort of had some kind of thing where we came up with can candidates that maybe were in this group, we could amend that. But as of today, we aren't doing that. And, and I want to say, too, I don't know how everyone else feels about this, but I feel like Occupy uh, is a very bottom-up strategy, and I feel like focusing on politicians uh, is fine on an individual level. If that's what you want to do, I'm totally not going to stop you. But I think as Occupy, we're a bottom-up strategy, and so we don't want to focus on top-down strategies. That's just my feelings. I'm just putting it up there. So a point of process, I mean, we had we had a vote. We, we, had, one, we had one objection, and I, was, I wanted to, to hear what the objection was. Yeah, I'm and, not blocking. And she made it clear she yeah. wasn't blocking. Yeah. So I think blocking. we do have so a consensus have here. Consensus. The discussion is done, Sorry. but yep. I think we can move on. No, I agree. Because we have an agreement. Yep. yep. Agree. Okay, so those are done. Next on the agenda. Next is an action to feed the homeless in Veterans Park. <laughs> this came up, Matt Richards. Why do you want to introduce this? Since this is your baby. This is part of you. I wasn't like as involved with this. As, I think it was actually Matt Lawrence's idea, like in the so first place. But, up, like, but I also I also brought it up. Um, I felt like. When I've, I've been heartbroken since we left Veterans Park and Victory Park, and I feel like when we left, we abandoned the homeless population of Manchester who we had been building a community with for five days, and that very much upset me. And um, I, think, I think we should find ways to reunite with our homeless community through some sort of action. I don't know, I don't want to hammer out the details. I, I, I don't have ideas, I don't have resources, but. One thing to put forward with that is I'd like to maybe see us to curb some of the problems which happened during the occupation, which was brought up, up to us later by the by the police, you know, which different people have different views of that, but, <laughs> but um, myself included. Um, Sometimes we're not equipped to deal with all of the problems that the homeless had, and it, there were several problems. I was there overnight. I mean, I didn't sleep. I stand, stood watch basically all night, and there was some pretty outlandish stuff that happened. But that being neither here nor there, I have a, my, my church has a huge amount of clothing that that we we don't have room for it anymore. We'd like to take and distribute it to Manchester. I thought that's and I've gotten permission from my church to do that. Um, but do we not? Would it not be smarter to? We can sit there, but let's bring in some of the local groups in Manchester that already do this, yeah. and let's let's add our power to them. I guess is all I ask. I don't want to take charge of anything down there. Um, 
I, I don't know how possible this is because I don't know if there are any chapters of this organization in New Hampshire. But um, if we're gonna if we're talking about feeding the homeless and, and we're coming to this from an Occupy stance, I think Food Not Bombs is a really important organization. I'm not sure if they have relevant point of like, information. Yeah. Um, Food Not Bombs is interested in opening a chapter in Manchester. Yes. Oh, awesome. I think uh, ta what one thing we can do as an action today is anybody who's interested in helping to. Um, put together food not bombs in Manchester. Uh, we can put a, we can create a work group um, to try and do that because I would be interested in setting up food not bombs in I Manchester. Would as well. And so anybody who wants to do that um, after we wrap up today, just come on. Over. We'll just put a, get a list together and start working on it. And not entirely related to this, so if anyone wants to just do point of process, that's fine. But um, were we at all going to talk about the New Hampshire IWW that was trying to form? Uh, I don't know what an I, I, I don't know what that is. Not on the agenda, so okay. point well, of process because okay. we, we haven't long enough we have in the a lot agenda. To yeah, okay. That's fine. Um, and then also, what also happened in the same time that was your, um, in that specific thread, was that August 4th, it looks like there's uh, there's plans to have a serve breakfast on, at oh. Veterans Plaza. Um, and so, um, if you're interested in that as well, um, we can talk about that also after the GA wraps up because I don't want to take up all of this time right now. Um, regarding the homeless in Manchester, there was the Movement Resource Group just gave Boston $4,000 because they have these Occupods that are basically little houses on wheels that are like. I don't know, maybe eight feet long by two or three feet wide. It's enough to keep a person safe and housed and be mobile. It's also a tool that you can use um, in direct actions. Um, and I'm friends with the people who designed them. And I'd be happy to talk to them to see if we might be able to do something like, by, like a bi-state um, initiative to talk about homelessness and address it maybe using some of that that intellectual property or whatever you want to call it. Um, do you have any actions that you wanted to suggest outside of that, or no. is that a good start? That's a good start. Okay. Well, if anyone else has ideas, we can talk about it in the work group later. Okay. Are you suggesting a side work group to yeah do after food GA bombs to talk about the yeah any other homeless? Okay. Yep, if that's okay. Um, all right. So the next um, item on the agenda is. What was the decision on that? Uh, we're going to move over to, after the GA, we're going to meet over there to talk about setting up a work group for Food Not Bombs, um, the April, the August 4th breakfast, and then also um, the, the Occupy Boston initiative for homelessness to see if we can work together. Um, let's see. Oh boy, okay. It's time for the Second Amendment discussion. <laughs> so... Who would like to speak from uh, either the free state perspective or the the right to defend perspective? I, I don't really, yeah, I don't know. Well, the, it's in here as that, so that's oh, why. Okay. Is this point of process? Yep. Uh, Dan had suggested the title not say Second Amendment, but right to self-defense. She said that too. She said that afterwards, didn't she? How about just guns? <laughs> yeah, let's guns, talk guns, about guns. guns. Can so we just call it okay? talking about guns? Because he didn't okay. change it in there, and I don't. I, I really just want to have the conversation more than. I know. Like um, so, is there anyone who wants to speak from the perspective of the right to defend yourself? Uh, can, can we put a time limit on it, just so that we don't boil over? What and, is your suggestion? Um, I'm going to say ten minutes, and I think. If we have five minutes, and if, if someone has an opposing viewpoint, we can have five minutes and we can have the discussion. And I think five and five, and that way we can kind of keep it short. And, and I think that it sounds like from all the introductions and all the discussion we had that if there, there may be still some concerns, we're going to address those concerns. I think we've all agreed that it's not an exclusion thing, and that helps. So this is about information about why somebody feels they need not... Um, not about the stuff we were talking about before. I think we need to keep a focus moving forward. So that will keep the, the conversation very tight. Um, so who would, is there anyone who would like to speak from the, Dan? I'll speak from the point of uh, being able to defend myself. 
And is there anyone who wants to speak from the alternate viewpoint? If not, then I will. Do you want to? I mean, I guess I, I mean I can speak on it. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I have an understanding of where they're coming from. Okay. I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I was practiced at it yeah. in the great gun right. debate I, when I took that woman's <laughs> side. <laughs> okay. So. Um, Dan, why don't you start, and then we'll figure out after. Call me Dan or Abel Freeman. Don't mind both. Um, you know, it turns out I own myself. <laughs> I hope everybody else here does as well, right? Um, and my... My idea of self-defense is my ability in this world to have at least the level of self-defense that, you know, that may be needed in the, in the case of uh, some site, sort of an, an attack or the, uh, you know, it could even be uh, I'm a member of a militia. Uh, people don't understand what militias are. Truly, mo militias are people. It, it, it used to be just men, but we'll be we'll be inclusive, and we'll say all all people, all adults, are in effect part of the militia. That's why that was the idea, the founding of this country, that the militia would actually be all people and be the defenders of the country that there wouldn't be a standing army that could ever be used as a, a tool against the people. So, so when you see me wearing a, a firearm, I am doing it in my own self-defense. Uh, I chose to do it later in life, it's only been a couple of years, and the fact is is that, you know, before I did it, I actually went out and uh, bought expensive uh, training, the Front Sight Four Day Defensive Handgun Course, which was not four eight hour days, it was four really long days of lots of training and shooting and and I, I felt actually pretty well prepared. I actually won the shooting contest at the very end of the, of uh, you know, on that range. And I don't know how I did that, but it, somehow I pulled that off and I, I'm a little bit proud of that. But uh, the fact is, is that you know, I, you know, when when I when I wear the gun, it represents the self-defense thing. It represents the militia thing. It also represents the thing of I am taking back my power because I see that the Free State Project and Occupy that the problems that that we're reacting to are basically the problem of the, the individual giving away their power to someone else and those people abusing it. To protect. So, so that gun is sitting out there, open carrying, so, so that, that folks know that I'm, I am retaining my power to defend myself. I am retaining more than that power. I, I'm actually a person that, uh, that is no longer consenting to be governed. So I have to, you know, I have to defend myself, and uh, uh, you know, right now I don't have a good holster, so I'm not, I'm, I, w I don't feel safe in carrying it in my pants or something like that, and uh, so I'm not going to do that. But uh, and and I've never been afraid. It's it's not a fear thing, and it's and and it's not a. Uh, in your face, you know, macho, I, you know, I've got a gun, uh, I'm tough or anything, I'm, I'm not that. I'm just a guy taking a stand about himself, about his place in society, and, and, and actually open carrying it also, I believe, opens up opportunities for dialogue with people that may have some issues with it. I, I, you know, I, there isn't a t-shirt made for this yet, but the t-shirt I want says, yeah, I'm carrying a gun, please ask me why. 
And uh, so that's open carrying for me. Or maybe some others. Wait. You opened with the fact that you own yourself. And I'm yeah. curious if anybody here disagrees with that statement. Because um, I imagine that's possible. Do you, do, well, do, do you disagree with the ideals of that, or do you disagree with the fact that you own I, I think he the didn't philosophy. get the memo that we live in a police state and he does yeah. not own himself. I think he did. <laughs> That's the point. Is he's, he's succeeding from it's that union. It's ideal. <laughs> Uh, point of process, I, I think that's a separate discussion about whether they own themselves or not. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. completely separate. <laughs> So do we go around on that, or is there is there uh, a yeah, yeah, opposition? It's a five yeah, okay. So um, the agreement was we would go through and we would listen, and then we would see. It looked like we wanted to check in and see where people were with the our side. So go. Yeah. Um, just really briefly, because I know we're limited on time in this discussion. Um, when I did my one post on the gun debate, um, I took a kind of middle of the road approach because I thought both sides had good points. Um, and I think some, on even on the quote-unquote pro-gun side versus the quote-unquote anti-gun side, uh, agreed with some of my points too, is that I think that the discomfort is a legitimate concern. And I think that if we're going to have guns, uh, people open carrying or concealed carrying in, um, in the groups. I do think that people's discomfort is a valid expression. And discomfort doesn't necessarily mean denying other people's rights. It just means bringing up the fact that, hey, I don't feel uh, comfortable with what you're doing. Uh, you don't necessarily have to stop. You're, it's full within your rights to not stop. But I just want to let you know that it makes me feel a little bit less safe or whatever. Um, and it may not even be necessarily um, the, that they're anti-gun or they don't like guns or they don't think you have the right to own a gun. It could just be simply they're not safe or they don't feel safe around it. They've had something happen in the past or whatever. Um, and, I, and I think, but I think also the other side was very way more divisive than they had to be, um, namely the, the side with Mark, um, that they were calling people who wear guns paranoid or uh, very much or whatever, and I and I think it's very detrimental to kind of resort to personal attacks on that. And I felt like when some people were saying, "Oh, well, the FSP crowd," again, that amorphous crowd of people who change every time somebody says that, um, are just a bunch of name callers or whatever. Um, I think there was a lot of name calling on both sides. So, um, in terms of the guns, I think guns should be here as long as people are comfortable with them. If they're not comfortable, I think they should let their expression be known, but that doesn't necessarily mean they can't have the gun. So that's my kind of middle of the road approach. I got, I got something I want to say, and, and, and I want to go back to the idea of self-defense, because um, I'm going to take it away from the gun issue for a second and, and abstract it, because so we have someone who's wearing a mask, and he's wearing a mask as a form of defense. He's feeling that he wants to be anonymous. We had somebody who was here this morning who was uncomfortable with that. And she chose to leave because she felt uncomfortable with his wearing a mask. But he wasn't being offensive, he was being defensive. His right to self-defense, none of us can trump that. He's got that right. If she felt uncomfortable, she had the right to leave. She did. We all were sorry she left. We wish she'd stuck around. I can't think of anybody who said good riddance. We, we wanted her to stick around. but. That was her choice. It's the same thing with guns. If somebody pulls a gun out and is using it offensively, we're all going to be upset about that. If somebody is using it defensively so they feel safer, then more power to them. And if somebody else feels uncomfortable, that's their thing to deal with. That's my view on it. But I think it, it's the same issue. And nobody's going to say masks are dangerous. They are what they are. Guns are a tool. And if you're using it for self-defense, you're fine. If you're using it for offense, there's a lot of us that are going to go and go, I don't think so. Um, did he actually had his hand up for a while? Yeah, I'd like to say something. I, would, I didn't come wearing a mask to be offensive. I think most of the members of the press are already gone. So I, the reason I've done it is like for 30 years in this state, I was actually licensed as a private detective in this state. I did, I'm also a paralegal. I'd like to help out in Manchester group too. I've seen a lot of corruption. And yeah, I've carried a gun. I mean, I've carried a gun a lot of times, but a lot of times I've carried a gun, I didn't need it. There have been times in my line of work where I didn't have a gun and I could have used it, but I still came out okay. But at this point in time, <coughs> in my age, 
get older, slower, can't tell, I'm 60 years old now. <laughs> you too. But I mean, it's, it's just one of those things where it's like, the revolutions that were fought weren't blown with kisses. And it's like you have the right to defend yourself, and those who rely on the police to defend themselves, if you look at the history of it, they have never been around to actually save a person. They always come ex post facto to write their reports. Even when they conduct their investigations, they put the little notice on the nine, you know, the six o'clock news. If you see this person, let us know. They're more into the law enforcement growth industry, you know, which is more a, gather, a revenue gathering method, and also suppression. You know, they work for the one percent basically. So yeah, I agree that if we want to carry a gun, carry a gun. You know, it shouldn't be offensive. You know, it's like someone else said, I'd rather be with someone who has that gun that can help me out than be with someone who's unarmed is just gonna scream. <laughs> Jack? Uh, yeah, I think the gun issue is about perception. Like, we can all agree in the ideals or whatever. But a lot of people, whether it's um, been trained into them or not, they're uncomfortable with them. For example, when I'm standing next to a policeman that has a gun, I'm uncomfortable. Um, so what I think it, this could uh, you know, evolve into is an opportunity to have a teach-in at each general assembly and to keep educating on it and why you should carry or why you should feel comfortable. Or, but I think that in order to be inclusive, you have to be respectful of the people that are afraid or concerned or whatever. I still don't think you can exclude the others, but I don't know how it's going to work, but uh, a teach-in would be an ongoing thing. That's my suggestion. Ben? Um, just a, just a, I'm trying to come from a middle ground. I think I personally am because I don't own a gun, but I, I recommend I allow other people to carry guns if they would like to. Um, but basically, I, I think we've had discussions before at General Assemblies on the issue of guns, and that if, again, if felt that guns were an issue and that they wanted to make it into a conversation. And I don't think anyone here is unwilling to have at least a conversation because it's a, it's a legitimate issue for some people. But, but that's just not what happened. So I, uh, weapons don't bother me personally. I'm almost a complete peacenik myself, so I'm likely to not fight back. Um, that's not my, like, carrying weapons isn't my thing. I don't think that violence uh, is going to get anywhere positive or productive. I think that violence begets violence. But as far as what makes me uncomfortable is the mishandling of weapons. So a weapon on its own isn't a problem. A weapon in a holster isn't a problem. But if some guy's got a gun out and is fucking around with it, then uh, that's <laughs> going to be a problem. And that's when that person needs to be talked to and or gotten away from. Uh, and I think that comes back to what we were talking about earlier, where somebody would not be welcome here if they were being dangerous uh, towards others. Agreed. So is it? Um, yeah, just to, I'd just like to make a couple of points real quick. Um, one of them is that a lot of us, uh, well, first off, this is obviously not a, a left-right issue. Um, many people, uh, even uh, Sean said he believed in an armed populace. Um, Black Panthers, many leftist organizations have, have uh, supported having an armed populace. So it's, it's certainly not a, uh, a left-right issue. What uh, surprises me is the number of people who say they, they want to get rid of the state, they want to live in a stateless society, they complain about the police state, they complain about oppressive government, but yet, in the most basic places, which, which um, they, they continue to call the state, in the most basic places, which is the protection of their life, their family, and their property. And if more people would take uh, responsibility and uh, for the training, I understand people say, I, I just don't want to do that. Well, okay, then if you don't want to do that, then the alternative is to apparently go to your corporate job, pay a lot of money in taxes, and have a, a, an overfunded police state e-department uh, where they come around and harass you for all sorts of ridiculous things, 
but don't complain about that because you're, that's what you're supporting. The, the only way, the only way to get rid of those people aren't going to say, "Well, we just can't have them." The only way to not have them is to have um, local neighborhood groups uh, that pick up the the that fill the need that people have um, to be protected. And we can all learn to do that ourselves. The reason that I carry is simply for that reason. I do not want to pawn off the responsibility for the protection of my life, family, or property onto society at large. I don't think it's your responsibility to pay money for a policeman to protect me. I think it's my responsibility to protect me. It's my responsibility to protect my family. You should not have to go and work extra hours to pay taxes to hire policemen to protect my family and property. I do that myself. Seth, how are we on time? I think we're right about it. All right. right is, does anybody feel like they have anything else they want to add to the conversation? Right. One uh, just quick statistic. Uh, I, it, it seems like those that are all concerned about seeing and others carrying guns it, are com in complete denial of the reality of the thousands of times a day that that a, a firearm is employed in stopping a crime without harming anyone. There, there, there are there are different statistics, different sources of information that you know, and 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 not all of them are probably complete because most of these kinds of incidents that where somebody's armed, they get attacked, the, the attacker finds out they're armed and decides to go find a softer target or, or maybe change their life. Maybe that's the thing that, that takes a criminal from being a criminal and says, you know, this is way too dangerous. Too I'm going to stop doing that and, and go off and, and find a job or whatever. You know, if they, if they deny the reality of the situation of the statistical fact that people use guns all the time without necessarily even um, even unholstering them. Uh, yeah, it, it just seems like a huge denial of, 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 of a, a safety-creating situation that uh, that really applies to the those of us that carry, open or not, are. are are part of. Yeah. Um, it's been good to hear why people are deeply concerned about protecting gun rights, that it's part of a larger mistrust of corporate government. I've learned something. I'm deeply concerned, however, if we become the group that stands for gun rights. It's tangential and smaller than the overall mission that brought us together. That's not a we aren't coming agree. together on gun rights. We're coming together on all the other things and saying that if you choose to carry, that is your right. We aren't saying everybody should go get a gun and carry it to GA. We're saying that we respect your autonomy in making that decision. If you choose to carry here, my wife is going to be deeply concerned that I'm coming to the group. And I'll have to explain that to her. There's no proposal on the table. Yeah, great. No. Yeah. Just there is can, can I direct respond to that? Kind of. I mean, and I'm. Look, I, I emptied my holster because I care about Occupy. I care about the group as a whole. I care about the people that are concerned. I hope that those people are willing to listen to the other side with an open mind and understand that I'm making myself vulnerable by stripping myself of, 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 of protection. I do have concern uh, that, that we're being oppressed daily. I, I have concern that, you know, I think that somebody that's, that's, that's taking, I fear people, I don't fear anybody that's open carrying because the people that I know that open carry take the time to educate themselves about the proper use. They're very careful uh, with it more so than just your average gun owner. I mean, most of us have taken extensive training. I shoot several hundred rounds a week at my own range, and, and, and I train from different positions, different, just because I want to be, I want it to be an extension of me, 
so that I don't have an accident. I have two small daughters. I've got more gun safes than I have guns, honestly. I mean, uh, I, I have a couple gun safes that are empty because I do take firearm safety as paramount in it. I mean, it, it's, I have a safe in my truck, which is where my gun is now. And as soon as we're done with this, I'm going to put my gun back on and I'm going to go about my, my daily life. Uh, but I, I take it beyond guns. I try and, you know, I think I made a post. I try and prepare for everything. I have extra shoelaces in my truck. I have all sorts of things. I mean, I, I'm a nut, I guess, but, but I've experienced a lot of things that I'm, I'd rather be prepared for than not be prepared for. And I don't want to make a huge issue of it, but, but I feel unsafe right now. And I, I wish that people... You know, I usually carry concealed. I'm, I'm, I've got my holster exposed because of the pink socks today, honestly. I carry concealed. You wouldn't know that I had a gun most of the time, um, unless you were close to me. And and, 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 and and I try and make it as unobtrusive because I do respect the fact that some people are fearful of it. But I hope that those people would respect my rights and my wishes and, and my feelings as well. And and that comes from a non-aggression sort of way, and, and that's all I have to say. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to add to the, this part of the conversation? Can I get a temperature check on moving on to the next item on the agenda? All right, the next item on the agenda is... You got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next item, if you guys didn't cover it when I ran to get a drink, was the um, FSP, uh, was the Free State Project. If anyone had questions or uh, a statement that they would like to make about how that organization is different but has some uh, similar goals in line or uh, I guess I, I mean <clears throat> it says teaching but I mean we could do it in the discussion format as as we just did okay. yes Absolutely. time limit proposed time, time limit, limit. 15 if we gave 10 to guns, I think we could give 10 to free state. Yeah. yeah. 10 yeah. minutes? I think 10 is, 10 is fine. Well, I agree. All right, sure. All right, so 10 minutes to talk about the free state. Would somebody like to start us off? I'll, I'll start because one of the things I've, I've had to do is explain the free state project to a lot of people. A lot of people have different political persuasions, different viewpoints, and I'm going to use an intro that I started just using recently. So I'm going to, I'm going to describe what happened. So. About 10 years ago, there were a whole lot of people that were very upset with, they looked around their country and they said, there's something wrong here and I'm not happy and I want to change things. And what can I do? And they tried some things and nothing was really useful and they got frustrated. And somebody had an idea, he said, what if we all stand together and occupy a place? <laughs> and it was kind of a radical idea, and people were like, what? And, you know, some people said, that's crazy, and, you know. And other people said, well, okay, maybe I'll give it a shot. And he said, well, if there's enough of us, they'd have to listen to us. And we're not trying to take over. We just want to be recognized, and we want our voices heard. And um, so, you know, I mean, I use that word occupy intentionally because if you think about it, that's what the Free State Project was. It was a bunch of people who have more libertarian leaning ideas but if you look at what everybody's pledging it's not explicitly libertarian the only thing they pledge is they're going to come to one place and occupy and they have a goal which is that government should be about protecting life liberty and property they feel that government is doing far more than that it's kind of out of control now exactly what that level would be you know they can argue over but they all know there's a problem so if you think about it, 10 years ago, the FSP started occupying and they picked one place to say, okay, everybody meet here and that here happened to be New Hampshire. When you look at it that way, this is no different than what occupiers have done. It's no different than what the Tea Party's done. The Tea Party was a bunch of people who said, we're really upset and unhappy with a big government and we're gonna get together in places and, and hold signs and protest. Everybody is upset about the same thing. We're all upset about government. Was there any reason sure. particularly New Hampshire? There was actually, actually a, whole a whole lot, lot of, of discussion stuff. about New Hampshire and, and other states. They had they whittled it down to ten states, and the ten states were all states that had fairly low populations because the goal was and, and again the go, the goal of twenty thousand people was a guess. Jason Sorens was a uh, doctoral student at 
Yale University who had studied this stuff and he looked at Quebec and he looked at the separatist movement there and he looked at other things and he said, well, okay, based on the numbers that are out there, I'm going to make a guess. And that guess is for a million people, 20,000 people might be enough activists to make a difference. And 20,000 people is not enough people to win elections. It's not enough people to go ahead and, and take it's a, It's people who would stand up and say, hey, wait a minute, we're here. We're going to work together. We're going to work on an issue and we're going to be a voice. And what's been amazing about picking New Hampshire and the reason New Hampshire got picked is it won a vote. It was that simple. It was the people who were here in New Hampshire who thought New Hampshire was a good choice convinced enough people out of the 5,000 people that were eligible to vote that it won. And I think second place was Wyoming. And if they picked Wyoming, I wouldn't be there because I didn't like Wyoming and I don't think it's a very nice place to live and I had driven through it and I would not have moved to Wyoming. I picked New Hampshire only after they'd already decided because they said, we're moving to New Hampshire. And I looked at it and said, that's kind of a cool place. And the more I learned, the more I liked it. I've met so many people who moved to New Hampshire for the same reasons that had nothing to do with the Free State Project. And then they go ahead and they go, of course, this, I came to the same conclusion. So, so when I describe the Free State Project at this point, you know, here I am, I, I describe myself. I'm, I'm straddling. I'm a Free Stater and an occupier and a Tea Partier. I, because I see them all connected. It's all the same thing to me. So when I see people drawing divisions, I'm like, well, what do you exactly disagree with? And I usually find it's because somebody gave them some false impression. It's some stereotype that they heard about. And I go, well, I know people that are the opposite. There was somebody who's part of the Occupy movement who said, I can't agree with the Free State Project because of what I heard. And I'm a Christian. And this is just unchristian. I'm going, yeah, the one of the presidents of the Free State Project is a really, really devout Christian. I would love for you to talk to him and have him tell you why he thinks the Free State Project is a Christian movement. Because we have that diversity and it's been difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm done. So my point was is that basically, if you don't know what the Free State Project is, go talk to a handful of Free Staters. You're going to get a bunch of different reasons why we're all Free Staters. And some of those will conflict with each other, but the real answer is we all moved here to occupy New Hampshire to change things for the better, just like everybody else. Hi. Um, so, point of clarification from the get-go, I am not a member of the FSB, nor have I ever been. Uh, that said, do not have uh, as big of disagreements, clearly, as Mark and some of the other people do. I associate, as, as, as uh, this proves, with FSPers. I have uh, for as long as I've been in New Hampshire. Uh, I enjoy a lot of what the FSP does, uh, and I think it's a, it's one of the reasons why I came to New Hampshire. Um, but I think one of the most frustrating things for me as somebody who associates with the FSP is that people always say that the FSP or this and that, when, and I know this has been said a thousand times, probably by mostly by FSPers, but the FSP is not a movement that endorses a single tactic or signal organization or single this or single that. It's just it's just an organization that wants to get a lot of people, namely like you know up to twenty thousand people in New Hampshire who want to reduce the size of government from you know the the current size to five to five percent or to zero or whatever. Uh, and it's not an organization that has some sort of uh, either vendetta or really likes Occupy. It's just an organization that wants to get a lot of people here who have similar ideas about what the role of government is in, in society. Um, so even not being an FSP member myself, I like a lot of what the FSP says and I like a lot of what Occupy says. And so I don't feel like I should have to choose between being FSP or being Occupy. I feel like I could associate with both groups. Um, so. Go ahead if you want to first. Oh, okay. Um, I just want to say, because I, it's been interesting hearing the debate that's came up over the Free State Project. I've lived in New Hampshire my whole life. Um, it, it's weird how much this seems like an immigration thing of some kind, something that you don't see usually in the United States between states. But some weird way, this is an immigration thing, which, by, which then becomes awkward because it's like they're invading. And that's exactly the argument that's being made. But I lived in New Hampshire all my life, and uh, the way I see it is, like Seth said, that you folks saw something that you liked in New Hampshire and decided to come here. 
and there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's what the country's all about. That's what America in general was founded on was going someplace that you wanted to be where you saw opportunities and something you liked. So for me, I'm personally uncomfortable with how close this became to being like foreign inroads coming into our country or our state. To me, that's my biggest problem that I've had with the argument against him. Heather? Can you speak I saw louder? That sign that said invasive. When I saw that sign that said invasive species, that really hit me. And I'm not Free State Project, but I'm new here. <laughs> you know, I'm a transplant. We moved up here from Texas, and you know, I was like, "Wow, am I invading?" Right. I. Sorry, I don't mean to. I love New Hampshire. I don't ever want to go back to Texas. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. <laughs> so I just like to say real quick that uh, unlike Seth, I did not vote for New Hampshire. It wasn't even on my top three. As a matter of fact, when they um, finally selected New Hampshire, I decided I was just going to leave the country. Um, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, uh, what 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 I found um, uh, actually was kind of annoyed by was that. Most of the people that voted for New Hampshire to be the state were already living in New Hampshire in, 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 the, in the original vote because I was one of the, the first 3,000 right. So they were like, New Hampshire's awesome, so we're going to vote for our own state. And I was like, that's baloney, man. I was like, so I, I voted for, for, for everywhere except here. Um, uh, but. But the fact that I, I don't want to go into that, I don't, we don't have time. I'll tell you about it later. Answer. You're, you're clear claiming ballot stuffing. That's not true. I'm, 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 All right, let's. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. So the uh, point is um, that uh, at the time, the governor, Benson, I believe, um, had officially said, welcome, come. Um, I s decided uh, I was going to come to uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival in literally like as a stop on my way out of the country and that was uh, like five years ago and I'm still here uh, so uh, New Hampshire is pretty pretty darn awesome as far as the FSP goes um, I can say that it represents a very wide variety of people um, from Christian conservatives and Mormons all the way to uh, socialist anarchists most of the friends the most of the subgroup that I hang out with are atheists anarchists and um, there are tons of FS peers who are, uh, you know, family people with kids, and they they do their job thing, and I never see them. I don't know them. Um, there's uh, like over a thousand in New Hampshire. I maybe know a couple hundred, and maybe associate with thirty to fifty on a regular basis. You know, it's not it's not a cohesive group. It's a very diverse group, and. Um, so yeah, it's it's. Uh, I don't think it's right to to try to characterize, um, you know, the, the broad group with any one characterization. If if you do that, you're just going to be making, uh, well, untrue generalizations is what it boils down to because it's just a very diverse group. Um, I'm not a native of New Hampshire. I'm actually from Texas, Heather, and uh, but I've lived here for 33 years. But I did join the Free State Project and vote for New Hampshire, so I was one of the ballot stuffers. <laughs> but I, uh, I think the uh, um, perception, again, is really important. And that is, um, if you believe that there's a kind of a corporate corporatocracy that's kind of taken over the 99%, that if you reduce the size of government top down, that s some people have the perception that, that it's only government regulation that keeps the corporatocracy from taking over completely. So conservative-leaning free staters completely give that impression that they would rather have the corporations run everything than have social justice. So I think that there's some learning for some free staters to get to, to get uh, uh, to understand how the power structure really works and how that as occupiers they should really be working for not, quote, smaller government but for smaller power elite control of 
all the rest of us. It's not as catchy. So uh, if you got twinkle fingers, I'll sit down.